Everybody hates the scale if it doesn't read exactly what you were expecting or wanting. And today, I'm going to tell you how some of these foods and different things you might be eating could actually be causing that scale to fluctuate a ton. Today on Protein Power. Milton from Team Flex. You're on my show, Protein Power, every single Monday on Team Flex TV. I get right on here, we get together, and we talk about everything nutrition related. Today, I'm going to dive into the scale and how different foods and whatever you're eating can actually make that scale fluctuate a lot and potentially give you bad readouts on progress tracking. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because it's one of five awesome shows I run all week for you. We got great content coming all week, and it's all for free to help you get where you want to be. All right, let's talk about the scale now. Pretty much everybody at some point in time, whether you're trying to lose weight, you want to lose body fat, you're on a contest prep or whatever, you want to be weighing yourself as a way to gauge your progress, right? It's an important part of actually being able to track where you're going. If you had a goal weight you're trying to get to or you're trying to make sure you're losing weight or trying to make sure you're on target for your competition, the scale is a tool that can be utilized to help you actually stay on track. But, however, sometimes the scale can become your worst enemy. And we all know that those of you out there, if you've been, you know, killing it all week, you hit all your workouts, you hit all your macros, hit all your nutrition, did everything you're supposed to do, you step on the scale and it doesn't say what you want, you get a little bit disappointed. You get a little bit discouraged. You get a little bit crazy, a little angry, a little, like, maybe you don't want to continue doing what you're doing to get to your goal. But the truth is the scale will always fluctuate. And it really can be so unpredictable based on just a few simple factors that a lot of times when we step on the scale it doesn't say we want to think you know we're not really thinking about it but I'm here to remind you okay here's the first thing sometimes when you step on that scale and your weight has jumped up and you've gone up and you don't know why you did everything right and it shouldn't be up it's a fluctuation from number one sodium okay a lot of people don't necessarily pay attention to their sodium intake all the time uh, and even if you do sometimes you might eat a different food or have tried a different sauce or maybe you had a meal out or something like that where the sodium level was not predictable it was not something you're used to having you know when you eat out it's a, it's a total guess it's a total best guess as to what you're actually getting and if you get extra sodium more than your body is used to well that makes you hold water weight that means when we step on that scale and we try to weigh in we try to track that progress and the scales up okay well it could be because of that water weight so anytime that scale jumps up on you and you don't know why consider the fact of sodium and start maybe paying attention to your sodium start tracking your sodium make it a little bit more predictable to understand all right if I have more sodium my weight went up and then you can realize all right that weighing's a little high but it's probably water weight I need to get back on track and get to work we got more things we're talking about more variables that affect that scale right after this break. TeamFlex.com presents a revolution in the online competition coaching experience. Contest prep has been redefined from anywhere around the world at the touch of a button. Your entire totally custom coaching experience built just for you. Constantly monitored and adapted by your own expert competition coach. The most complete competition coaching experience awaits you now. Go to TeamFlex.com and try it free. Sodium, I gotta tell you, it's one of the big key factors for weight fluctuations and people always forget about that. Here's another thing people forget about sometimes. The actual volume, number two, the actual volume of the food that you're eating. And this means the amount of foods, right? If you're packing a lot of food into your body, uh, it's gonna change the way that you weigh in. So sometimes people do this where, you know, they're spacing out their meals, right? They got great, you know, four or five meals all day. They got one in the morning, they got another one a couple hours later, a couple hours, you know, very common in the fitness this industry with many goals, fat loss goals, any types of goals that we space out our meals evenly and that's how we get all the macros and we get the results. But what happens sometimes is people, you know, they miss a meal, they miss a couple different meals in a day, the day gets crazy, something unexpected happened and now you ended up eating two meals or something like that to hit your goals at the end of the day. Or maybe you just had an off day in general and you had to catch up on all your food at the end of the day to make 
sure you're getting those results, but now all this food volume is in your stomach, right? It's actually in your body digesting, and when you go get on a scale, if you've done that, it's gonna cause that scale to go up, okay? It's just a factor of the actual food volume. But even if you're spacing out those meals evenly, you're not in that spot where you had to bunch a couple together, the food choices you make can actually also do the same thing. You know, if you're eating a lot of stuff that's taking a while to digest in your body, that's gonna cause that scale to fluctuate too. So uh, an important thing is, is any time around, you know, a, a weigh-in, a check-in day, something like that, you wanna make everything as predictable as possible. Try to not change variables too much. Try to not miss meals and eat a bunch the night before check-in, you know, things like that. The actual food volume, though, can shift that weight. And if you understand that, a lot of times, again, you can look at that and be like, all right, that could be an indicator for why we jumped up and I'm going to drop down over the next few days and getting back on track, right? The whole point of this video is to remind you don't get off track if you're not seeing this progress the way you want to see it or you expected to see it, okay? The last thing that we got to talk about, very important, and there's honestly many, many more variables to the scale that I could go into. I'm not going to do it all on this video today, but you can ask me questions anytime about this. Um, number three would be hydration, okay? So how hydrated your body is. A lot of people would think, right, if you drink more water, you're going to retain more water weight. But the answer is actually the opposite. A lot of times, if you miss drinking water, your body then holds more water when you actually do drink it. So, you know, the more water you drink, the less your body kind of holds, and that's really how it works. But if your water intake has been different anytime around a weigh-in, that's going to change how you weigh in on the scale because water retention, water fluctuation, your body is mostly water, people. And when you change the water, say, you missed the day or maybe you were out at the lake, you know, it's summertime now, you're at the beach in the heat and all this stuff, it changes how your body is holding on to water. And that's going to change the weight on the scale yet again. So as you can see, the scale is not necessarily the best way to ever gauge progress. It's just one of these tools and you should never go on to a scale expecting a linear progression either way. If your goal is to gain muscle, gain weight in that sense, you know, it's going to go up and down all the time. If you want to lose body fat, you're on a contest prep, whatever it is you're trying to do, it's going to go up and down all the time. What you got to look at over time is the trends and understand there's fluctuations that will happen and you want to look at your weigh-ins and the average and if you see it's going down, you want to lose weight, it's working. You know, it's going down over time and same for the opposite side. If you're trying to build muscle gain, whatever, that's how it's going to go. But it's never going to be a linear path. If you always want this linear projection, you're going to be very disappointed all the time. So next time you step on that scale and it doesn't read exactly the way you want, take these three things into consideration and know that I got a lot more for you too. I hope that you check out my free coaching trial on teamffelex.com. Me or one of my coaches will show you, tell you, help you with whatever your goals are. That's what we do. And it's free, no obligation, no reason not to do it. You're crazy if you don't, honestly. All right? I appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow for the Iron Palace. Coach Rye is out.